Hello, Internet Sister Root. Okay, yesterday's 10 hour long blackout. Yeah, it lasted 10 and a half fucking hours. You wanna know what I did? I pretty much stayed home and chilled out. Internet access was bare minimal because the cellular network was totally flooded. Regular usage was completely out. Bell had a big outage too. So did Rogers. Yeah, that sucks. But then again, I had no power, had no computer. And laptop battery had minimal use because that had low power. I got to replace it. So I didn't use that. Plus, I wasn't about to tether because there was no access whatsoever. Why? Congestion to hell. Everybody was pretty much tethering their phones or live streaming and it congested so bad, congested shit so badly that some calls were even dropping. Well, no, calls had nothing to do with it, but when I tried to make a phone call, it was dropping. This also affected Rogers and Bell and Telus, assumingly, because, yeah, some of my neighbors could even receive phone calls, much less make them on their cell phones. Towers had issues. Yeah. That's what happens during blackouts, and especially if the towers aren't all powered by a generator, a backup one. So, I just had to be calm. Perspective, I had to uh, plan ahead. I cooked outside twice, had a kettle going all day, easy to do, and a do-it-yourself barbecue. A wax burning candle with wood as a wick. A big one. That was pretty much keeping the kettle boiling and the constant cycle of tea bags and a skillet on top of a grill that sat on top of it. You know, bricks. Yep, that's what I did. I cooked outside. No soot got into the food, I made damn sure about it. Because Nobody wants that, especially wax soot. That's disgusting. Uh, yeah. That's what I did. Oh, and listening to the radio. My trusty SanDisk Sansa M230 was what I was using. And I'm still using. It's been for a lot. But that's what I was using. 19 hours and a single battery. And I only went for one battery because it was uh, listened to previously, that's why. But the battery that's in it's still going strong. So, yeah, 19 hours per cell. What else can you get on any standard uh, isolated media player? Not much. And I don't have to take it apart to the device to swap a battery either. And I only have to charge my device once using the power bank. I have three power banks. A fourth one I actually had to repair, but that's nothing new. What I don't have is a UPS or a gas generator, which I don't want to get. Because you can't use that inside or you'll die. So I can either do the do-it-yourself route, get an inverter with a good number of watts, a deep cycle acetylic acid gel type battery. You can get those or standard SLA. Five to 10,000 amp hours. That's a lot. And that should last at least a whole day, depending, maybe more, depending on what's plugged into it. Got an inverter and the charger may roughly cost about $100. I'm only guessing maybe $150, $200. A UPS would cost more. It's obviously uninterruptible. And uh, as for hooking directly a uh, big beefy car battery to it, a marine battery or deep cycle type, I don't know if the circuitry can handle it because it's versus five amp hours versus 5,000 amp hours. That's a lot, you know, 5,000 amps versus five. 
I'm pretty sure they have automotive fuses I could swap for that, but as a circuitry, it may destroy it. So I may just go with the inverter option and keep that handy just in case. That way, and get the motor up and run it again should that happen again and keep it running, you know, for the phone service and yes, the internet service. Penny it doesn't go out again. <laughs> but it's not perfect. Oh yeah. Things I gotta plan ahead for. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Oh well, pretty soon I'll be getting that anyway. So yeah. I didn't bother going out because there was at least maybe five to ten collisions or more that happened because, you know, when traffic lights go out or when they're blinking either way, it should be treated as a four-way stop, you know, an always stop. Everyone stops, then one party decides to go after the other. It's the law. However, that wasn't happening and many crashes were happening and I don't know, maybe some people got hit by cars, by motorists not pay attention or in too much of a fucking hurry. Like, seriously. Seriously. There's no need to be in a fucking hurry when you're in the middle of a power outage. You gotta pay attention to what's in front of you, not what's on your screen. So, yeah. I heard the sirens maybe five or six times in my area. Yeah, that's how many times there was a crash. And no, it wasn't due to, uh, elevator entrapments because they didn't go on my street. It was further south. And they stopped further south. So it was near Pritchard. Or Dundas or St. Clair. Or under that bridge. Way too many people driving impaired or in too much of a hurry and that's what happens. And the ones that are blowing past red lights, yeah, that's gonna cause a lot of problems. Crashes. So I did hear a few bangs too, so yeah, that was likely what happened. They do echo when the power's out and there's no noise from obviously air conditioners and all that. You can hear a lot more when the power goes out. Trust me. And I saw a lot more stars than usual, which is nice. That's one of the nice things about a blackout when the night approached. I saw a lot more stars besides the clouds covering them. I'm not wishing for another blackout or more, but the absence of light is actually a good thing. But despite that, everything was all cool and collected. I didn't bother with social media too much. It was mostly just email and text messaging on occasion. I neglected my phone most of the time and left it inside because it wasn't important. And I probably only had four phone calls during that time. That was it. You see, I'm not one to be completely dependent on a mobile device to function. I mean, those addicted to it, not those dependent on it for mobility issues or speech impairment issues, you know, disabilities. Thankfully, and I'm not taking this for granted, because I don't have such a problem. And for those that do, that sucks. For those that were confined to wheelchairs in apartments, they couldn't get out. They were trapped, especially when the generator in our building went out three times. They couldn't get out of their units. They were stuck. So that was one of the downsides of a blackout, and that's terrible. There was many people with flashlights going throughout the hallways in my building and the neighboring buildings. So, that's not good. Besides that, well, I hope everybody stayed safe and, you know, didn't get hurt or whatever, because that would suck, especially in the dark. You always got to have a flashlight with you. Always be prepared for that. If you don't got a flashlight, get one. Get one that takes one battery instead of three or two, because one battery goes a long way and you can swap it three times if you had three spare batteries, rather than having to swap all three because one or two are dead, because that's what happens with three. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. Peace out. Thank you for watching. 
have a great day, and, uh, well, hopefully none of this shit happens again, but unfortunately, with climate change, and don't fucking deny that shit either, it's only gonna get worse. And I expect shit like that to get worse unless things get done to curve it. Anyways, cheers, feel free to subscribe. See you later.